The following is a class given by His Holiness Jaya Bhattaka Swami Maharaj on October 13th, 1981 in Washington, D.C. The class begins with a reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 9, Chapter 10, Text 55. Because of service rendered to the husband with love and faith. Because of the service rendered to the husband of the Silena. Silena. By such good character. By such good character. Prasraya Avanata. Prasraya Avanata. Always very submissive. Always very submissive. And ready to satisfy the husband. And ready to satisfy the husband. Sati. Sati. Chaste. Chaste. Bhia. Bhia. By being afraid. By being afraid. Priya, Priya, by shyness, by shyness. Cha, Cha, also, also. Bhavagya, Bhavagya, understanding the attitude of the husband, Bhartu, <coughs> of her husband, <coughs> Lord Ramachandra, Lord Ramachandra. <coughs> Sita, Sita, Mother Sita, Mother Sita. Aharat, Aharat. simply captivated, simply captivated. Mana, Mana, the mind. mind. Translation by His Divine Grace to the A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. Mother Sita was very submissive, faithful, shy, and chaste, always understanding the attitude of her husband. Thus, by her character and her love and service, she completely attracted the mind of the Lord. Translation. Mother Sita was very submissive, Mother Sita was very submissive. Faithful, shy, and chaste. faithful, shy, and chaste, always understanding the attitude, always understanding the attitude of, her husband. of her husband. Thus, by her character, Thus by her character and, her love, and her love and service, and service she, completely attracted the mind she completely attracted the mind of the Lord. Report by Srila Prabhupada. As Lord Ramachandra is the ideal husband, Akka Patni Ratha, Mother Sita is the ideal wife. Such a combination makes family life very happy. Yadyat Acharati Sreshtas Tatad Eveta Janaha. Whatever example a great man sets, common man, people will follow. If the kings, the leaders, and the brahmanas, the teachers, would set forth the examples we receive from Vedic literature. The entire world would be heaven. Indeed, there would be no longer a hellish conditions, there would no longer be hellish conditions within this material world. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the ninth canto, tenth chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled, The Pastimes of the Supreme Lord Ramachandra. The Lord, as Sri Ramachandra has come and given the perfect example how one should act as a king, as a human being, although he is the Lord himself, he was playing this pastime or acting in that pastime. The Lord is accompanied by his pleasure potency. He's accompanied by his pleasure potency, Sita Devi, who is also the reservoir of all good qualities. The Lord Ramachandra and Mother Sita, when they were banished <coughs> to the forest, <coughs> exiled to the forest for 14 years, then at that time it was revealed <coughs> 
that they went and visited Navadvip Dham. They visited Navadvip Dham, accompanied by Lakshmana, and uh, were enjoying the transcendental beauty. There is specifically a place in Navadvip which is not different from Ayodhya. In Navadvip, each holy dham is manifested eternally. <coughs> there you will find Radha Kunda, Shama Kunda, Govardhana. You will find Nishingha, Chitta, Prabhas, Chitta. All the different holy places. They have all taken shelter in Navadvip, which is known as Tirtha Raj or Maharaj as the uh, greatest of the Tirthas because in Navadvip, unlike other Tirthas, there is no offense taken. For instance, if one goes to Vrindavana and commits an offense, that is a permanent scar on one's devotional service or that a very deep scar that can, uh, just like when one worships Radha Krishna deities, that's very, uh, one has to be very careful because Radha Krishna worship is on spontaneous love. So if one is worshiping on the platform of sadhana or strict rules and regulations, he has to be very careful. So similarly, the holy dams, like, of course, which Vrindavan is the, uh, sacred place of Lord Krishna, the Samambonam Lilastan. But even in Vrindavana, if one commits an offense, <coughs> that he can uh, be spiritually harmed. <coughs> While in Navadvi, Lord Chaitanya and Itana, they don't take any offense. Rather, it has been shown that devotees like Jagai Madhai even Madai personally hit Nityananda on the head, causing blood to come, injuring him. He was forgiven. Devananda Pandit, who was a great offender, Srivas Thakur was in his class. He was reading the Bhagavatam, but he was more a scholar than a devotee. Rather, he was a scholar. Uh, Devananda, while well, Srivas is a pure devotee, in the Panchatattva Sriva. So when he started to read about the qualities of Krishna, Srivas became overwhelmed and he, he, he started to uh, choke up and he fell unconscious right in the class. He said, what a disturbance to my class. Wake him up. But he was in Samadhi. So they couldn't wake him up. So they said, drag him out. Sleeping in my class. He just didn't even know what a, who a pure devotee is or what happened. He, he was so angry. So they dragged him out, the students, and threw him outside. And he came and he saw he was thrown out of the class. He was very offended. What could he do? So he left. After that, Lord Chaitanya, he severely chastised David on the pond. That you rascal, you call yourself an Acharya teacher. Not that he was a, he was a teaching a teacher. And... Uh, so, uh, but even he was forgiven eventually by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for his offenses. So, in that regard, Navadip is uh, very dear to all the devotees because they know that by serving in Navadip, even for one night, it's like uh, spending, uh, going through all the uh, holy places in India. And for spending even three days in Navadvip is like spending uh, one month in the uh, in the seven main tirthas of uh, India, of the world. So Ramachandra, with his good wife Sita and Lakshmana, they all went to visit Navadvip. As soon as Ramachandra entered into Navadvip, he started to laugh. And... Uh, Sita Devi says, why are you laughing? And he said, well, I'm laughing thinking of my pastime here in the Kali Yuga. He said, what do you mean? He said, well, in the Kali Yuga I come here and I distribute freely love for God, chanting uh, the holy names. 
Here I spent 24 years. Then I left my mother and my young wife. And I took sannyas and preached all over. Well, Sita Devi said that that's a terrible thing. <laughs> <laughs> you left your wife? <laughs> so I hope that you never do that to me. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> Ramachandra said that, no, you're going to come as my wife then. And the whole life, you're going to be feeling the separation from me. <coughs> Sita Devi says, it's a, very, <coughs> it's a very horrible thing to be without your associations as well. You will experience my association through separation. <coughs> so, then uh, they uh, were able to have she was able to have the darshan of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his form like that. Then they went to Dandakandi and other places. So, actually, in uh, this Kali Yuga, 500 years ago, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. And he appeared, of course, along with all of his associates. The Lord doesn't come alone. The Lord is not alone. Just as much as we're discussing Ramachandra, he's a great king. A king without a kingdom doesn't pull very much weight. A king means he has got ministers, he has got various uh, subjects, a kingdom. This is a king. Right? There are some <coughs> heads of state who have been exiled like what, Prince Sihanouk or something, and this one, that one, but they have no kingdom. So, of course, sometimes they get a newspaper article, but actually they don't have very much uh, to say or do without a kingdom. So a king without a kingdom is not very important. A king with a kingdom is very important. So just like that, the Lord has no great significance if he didn't have anyone to be the Lord of. If there was no creation, if there were no living entities, no energies, then to be the Supreme Lord, he would be the only one to appreciate that. But because he has expanded himself into so many individual living entities, into so many plenary portions, and into uh, so many internal potencies, external potencies. Therefore, he has uh, come into a proper perspective. So, Srila Prabhupada has instructed us that the Vedic conclusion is that as li living entities, as individual spirit souls, we should understand our position and we should be satisfied in our position. That Krishna, as the Supreme Lord, as a Samu Bodham of everything, of course we can understand <coughs> His unique, <coughs> singular position, one without a second, but our position as one of the unlimited individual living entities is still very significant. The living entities are eternal, they are also indispensable. They have an eternal position with the Lord. Just as much as sunlight is necessary, the sun and sunlight both are necessary. What is the sun without sunlight? And what is the sunlight without the sun? So Krishna is Adhi, He's original. But our relationship with Him, our position in relation to Him is also permanent. So we should be satisfied in our original and real position as His eternal servant. In any other type of position, we are artificially trying to position ourselves or situate ourselves. We are naturally the servant of Krishna. We are His part and parcel. So rather than trying to artificially assume some other type of position, we should take what is our real post. 
and be satisfied in that. We'll automatically, we'll be satisfied in that. It's because we are artificially trying to be the Lord, artificially trying to enjoy the external energy, when in fact, we are the eternal servant of Krishna. We are his part and parcel. Because of this mistaken idea, therefore we're suffering and being kicked by maya. Koto nidra jao maya pisa chira kola. How long will we remain sleeping in the lap of the witch maya? So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to deliver all the living entities from ignorance. <coughs> but in this Kali Yuga, the living entities are so fallen. They are so devoid of desire for spiritual advancement that he has given his ultimate mercy. He has given his ultimate mercy, Krishna consciousness, to deliver all the living entities. <coughs> Krishna Bhavanam Rito. So, when Lord Chaitanya came, he didn't come alone. He came with all of his personal associates, with those great devotees. Those great devotees would go with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his residence, in uh, the residence of Srivas, and they would chant in Kirtan. Lord Chaitanya, and they would also chant out in Nagar Kirtan in the streets. So, Lord Chaitanya was saying, we, why should we sleep the whole night like a dead man? Let's chant Hare Krishna the whole night. <clears throat> so they would come together and chant Hare Krishna in Srivasa's house. Sometimes they go to his uncle, Chandrasekhar's house and chant. But it would be a closed door affair. And Lord Chaitanya there would manifest his servitorship to himself. He was in the mood as a devotee. So he would always be manifesting his mood as a devotee. With his arms raised in the air, he'd be crying, Krishna, Krishna, in great separation, and the devotees would be overwhelmed with his mood of separation. Sometimes he would become jubilant and shout out and jump. Sometimes he'd suddenly, boom, fall to the ground just in com and come unconscious, and the devotees' hearts would be completely shook. Nityananda would run and grab him before he hit the ground. Sometimes he'd become so heavy that at every step the whole earth would quake, would just shake because he was the weight of the whole universe, being Jagannath, being the Lord of the universe. And sometimes in his ecstasy he would become so absorbed in Krishna that he would become as light as a cotton ball. And the devotees would lift him up with one finger and pass him around over his head, their heads. <laughs> And he would be in, in trance, in ecstasy. And the devotees would be chanting kirtan and passing Lord Chaitanya around. <laughs> I heard it in, in this year in Bhagavan's zone, they were passing Brahmananda around. Yeah. I don't know if he became light as a cotton ball. Brahmananda <laughs> <laughs> Swami. So, sometimes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would become so hot that the devotees would take the sandalwood paste and put it on his forehead. And just like when you put water in a skillet, I would just, it would, it would just immediately dry. Just as soon as it was applied, dry. <laughs> it was so hot. The devotees are getting very anxious. And then sometimes, Lord Chaitanya would be so cold that to touch him and just freezing. And then everyone get in. Mother Sachi would get in such anxiety seeing Lord Chaitanya fall like that. That she was praying to Krishna, I can't take it, I can't stand to see Lord Chaitanya when he falls down like that. I think every bone in his body must be breaking. When my Goranga, my Nimai falls like that, please have your mercy on me that I, that I don't. Either he doesn't do it or I can't see it when it happens. Just like one time Srila Prabhupada was uh, in Calcutta, one of his servants was leaning out the window right next to him to get the, a neem twig off. The, there's a little neem twig in the back there. And then Prabhupada saw him leaning out over the, over the third, you know, it's like a big double English story. So it's like a third story height. And uh, so what are you doing? He said, I'm just getting you a neem twig. So the Prabhupada said, don't. He says, don't do it. He said, well, there's no other way I can get it. He says, well, at least don't do it in my vision. <laughs> it gives me too much anxiety. <laughs> so Mother Sachi couldn't stand to see the, uh, the 
the falls of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Lord Chaitanya blessed her that whenever these kirtans were going on, as soon as she heard the kirtan, she became absorbed in trance. And at that time, she didn't know what was going on. She was there. I mean, she was completely absorbed in Krishna uh, prema. And she would just be meditating on Krishna in complete ecstasy. And then the kirtan, other things that were going on were more or less external for her. In this way, she wasn't put in anxiety when Lord Chaitanya fell. Sometimes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu assumed the mood as the Iswara, as the Lord. And uh, at that time, it was a completely different. Those devotees like Advaita were running after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to get his dust from his lotus feet, but who couldn't do it when he was in his devotional attitude because rather he would be going for their dust and he would uh, worship Advaita. But when he was as a Lord, then Advaita could worship him. And all the devotees liked it when Lord Chaitanya would assume his mood as a Lord. But when he would assume the, his, his uh, actual Leela here as a devotee, then they would have to cooperate with him in that mood. So these devotees were very experts, so it was a closed door for these type of devotees, so they were able to experience these pastimes of Lord Chaitanya. Others who were criticizers, who were uh, envious in different ways, they were not allowed to come in. And they wouldn't have understood what was happening. They would stand, they would go by and stand outside, because still they were attracted by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his devotees. So they'd stand by outside the door of Sri Vasa's house and speculate, what are they doing inside there? <laughs> and there'd be three, four would be standing there, and one would say, well, I think they must be drinking. <laughs> they must be taking some alcohol. Said, oh, yes, that's it. They're all, you can hear them shouting, yeah, they're howling, ho, oh, what's that? So they must be chanting, uh, they must be drinking. <laughs> Otherwise, how they could be shouting so much? <laughs> yeah, there are these people. Watch. Just then going on and on. They're just offending and offending. Only place you could ever get away with that is Navadip Dhan. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, you know, sometimes they say, what are they doing in there? I says, oh, they must be having some type of uh, orgy or something. They even this this going on and on, so many bogus criticisms. So well, sometimes a simple person would come and hear the kirtan and stop and say, oh, how, how beautiful. I said, what do you mean? Don't you know what they're doing in there? <laughs> I said, well, all I know is that those who are inside there with him, they're very fortunate. And we're out here because we are very unfortunate. Otherwise, we would be in there <laughs> enjoying the Hari Kirtan. Oh, so you're one of them, huh? You know, and then point their finger and intimidate the person and walk away. You're Hare Krishna. <laughs> and of course, you know from Chaitanya Charita how some of these criticizers one day they put blood and all kind of offering uh, for for worshiping uh, Kalabhairava or Chandi, I forget, <coughs> one of the goddesses or Tamasic Puja, Bhavani and uh, Bhavani, <coughs> one of the forms of Lord uh, Miss, uh, uh, the Devi, Durga. And of course, uh, Sivas came out and saw that, called all the Brahman and said, look at I've been doing Bhavani Puja. Every laughed. They knew that Srivast the pure Vaishnava, this envious people. So they brought the sweepers and they cleaned the place and threw Ganges water. And then that Chapala Gopala, who was one of the, he got leprosy for his offenses. But uh, later he was delivered by Lord Chaitanya. Even if someone commits an offense in uh, the Holy Dham, they get punishment. But it's in such a way that eventually they can also get delivered. It's a very special mercy. <coughs> but, uh, so the devotees who were inside, of course, they were the most fortunate. Even their outside, they were fortunate. Even their, still they were born in Navadiv, then they could see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they could hear him, they could uh, have that vision. We are so unfortunate, we are not able to have that transcendental darshan. At least... Somehow or another, Lord Chaitanya has sent his, uh, has sent Srila Prabhupada 
and uh, given us the association of pure Vaishnavas. Otherwise, we were simply uh, floating in the ocean of uh, nations with not even a uh, drop of spiritual life, simply as dead men, simply biding time until our next transmigration. So, this is all Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy and the mercy of his devotees that this Krishna conscious movement is spreading all over the world. So that kirtan began <coughs> there in Navadvipa at Sivas Angan. So sometimes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he would reveal to the devotees that were with him what their real character was. And the devotees, they didn't know who they were in their previous births. Krishna knew, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he knew. But the other devotees, they didn't know. Just like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu called Murari Gupta and told Murari Gupta, you are my eternal servant. This was when uh, Mahaprakash, when he was in the mood as uh, the Lord, he said, you are actually Hanuman. Right. Huh. And uh, at that time, Lord Chaitanya assumed his form as Ramachandra. He assumed his form as Ramachandra and he was accompanied by Sita and Lakshman. And all around there are monkeys running, all the uh, hordes. And then Murai Gupta saw his own spiritual form as Hanuman <coughs> and he became un immediately overwhelmed and he became unconscious. <coughs> then he uh, came, now Chaitanya called him Murari and he came up and he said that in every appearance you are assisting me. You are assisting me in coming as my devotee. <coughs> so Now I want to give you a boon. What do you want? You just tell me. I'm giving you a boon. You want liberation, mystic power? What is it you want? And Murari Gupta, he said, I simply want to be your servant. I want to be your servant birth after birth. And wherever you appear, that if I can serve you. And if that's not possible, then at least that I can have the association of your devotees. This is my only desire. <coughs> so, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu blessed him with pure love for Godhead. And he said that anyone who criticizes Mari Gupta, Anyone, his spiritual life is then immediately finished. Because Mari Gupta, if someone thinks, well, he was a physician, he was, uh, if someone thinks, that, well, this person is not a great devotee, and someone just criticizes him consciously or unconsciously, actually just criticizes out of some envy, purposefully, not unconsciously, purposely criticizes him, especially, then Lord Chaitanya will not forgive him. So exalted was uh, Murai Gupta, so dear to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he, could, he, he just would not tolerate any criticism <coughs> of Murai Gupta. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is a combination of Krishna and of course within him there is also Ramachandra. That's why sometimes Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would show his six-handed form. The two hands of Krishna are playing on the flute. The flute is attracting the minds of all the devotees, giving pure love, giving pure love for Krishna. The ecstatic, especially the main purpose of the flute is, is attracting, attracting one by the beauty of Krishna, by his transcendental qualities. Then Ramachandra, he's got the bow and arrow. He shoots the demon. Shoots the demon in the heart, just like Ramachandra killed Ravana. I heard yesterday you had a big Leela defeating Ravana on behalf of Lord Ramachandra. So that also the demon in our heart, the demon in our heart which wants to make us the enjoyer, us the Lord, he has to be rooted out. So Ramachandra can shoot him with his divine arrow. Then the other two arms, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu carrying the danda, 
and the water pot. So with the danda, he beats the impersonalists and the arguers with his danda, defeats them. And with his kamandalu, with his water pot, he throws the amrit water, which gives pure love for Krishna. So Krishna is attracting and Lord Chaitanya is giving the pure love from his water pot. So Lord Chaitanya is both defeating the impersonalists, <coughs> the mayavadis, the arguers, and he's also giving pure love for Krishna. So this is the sixth arm form, Sharabhuj, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So there is a parallel between Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes and Krishna's pastimes and Ramachandra's pastimes. And that just as there was a great separation between Sita Devi and Ramachandra, so Vishnu Priya, she also suffered a great separation from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu being only 16 years old when he took sannyas and worshipping his lotus feet for all, uh, for she, he sent his shoes to him and she worshipped his uh, shoes from his lotus feet her whole life actually we can understand that when our beloved uh, our and respected uh, previous Acharya Srinivas Acharya visited Navadweep that he was greeted by uh, Bhansi Das Babaji, I believe, uh, Prince Bhansi Das Babaji, <coughs> the personal servant of uh, Vishnu Priya. And uh, he went before Vishnu Priya, paid his obeisances, prostrated himself. She's also known as Iswari because she's internal potency, just like Janava Devi, internal potency. They're not ordinary living entities. <coughs> so, this was after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had disappeared. She was very thin. Her hair was unkept, her clothes, everything. She was just not sleeping, not eating, just chanting day and night in complete separation of the Lord. Still she looked just like uh, the Arabian sun, could, just behind the cloud. You couldn't keep the light in. You could see that she was so effulgent. When he bowed down, she put her lotus foot on his head and blessed him. And then she sat down and told him that last night Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had come to me in a dream. He sat down next to me and said, sit he and then called me. I sat next to him, put his arm around me, and he told me that there is one devotee of mine, very dear, who has suffered a great deal. This was after Srinivas had suffered separation, <coughs> missing Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, separation of Gadadhar, separation of, of uh, Nityananda and Adaita. He was so many times thrown into the ocean of separation, into the pits and oceans of separation. He said, so he has suffered a lot. You give him your special mercy and you send him, after meeting all of the devotees here in Govardhan, you send him to Vrindavana to meet Rupa and Sanatana so that he can study the Bhagavatam there. Because Srinivasacharya was very eager to study the Bhagavatam under a pure devotee. One cannot simply study the scriptures without, without any guru, without a spiritual master. Just as much as by reading a book one doesn't become a surgeon, or even more so. Even someone reads a book and could become a surgeon, which I think is unheard of in the world, you cannot read the scripture and become a uh, devotee without spiritual master. So Srinivas Acharya knew that. So he was searching for a spiritual master. But he was just <coughs> failing to achieve just before he would uh, get to a place, the person would disappear. So then Srinivas uh, Acharya thus got the blessing of uh, Mother Vishnu Priya. But you could see that how she was completely absorbed in separation, thin, unkept, materially, but spiritually effulgent nonetheless. Completely spiritually effulgent. So she was uh, in that ocean of separation. Then soon after she <coughs> again left this world and joined Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So these pastimes, ultimately Krishna is the fountainhead of all pastimes. And Lord Ramachandra is representing 
one portion of those pastimes. He has his own unique pastime, but they are moods which are contained within Krishna's mood. Therefore, he is understood to be a partial expansion of Krishna. So, uh, Sanatana Goswami has described that Ayodhya has a place which is above Vaikuntha and below Goloka. It's just in the middle there. Just outside, beyond Ayodhya is Dwarka. But Ramachandra is a unique, he is above the Narayana forms of the Lord. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has so kindly come down with his associates who were present in Rama Leela as well as the associates who were present in Krishna Leela. And he is delivering the pure nectar. He is giving what has never been given before. That is pure love for Krishna, Krishna Prema, which is the Prayojana or the Samam Bonam, the highest objective of life, highest goal, highest achievement. He is freely giving it out. Without considering this person is qualified, this person is unqualified. Patra, Patra, Nab, Nahi Bichar. Who is qualified or who is unqualified? He's not considering. He's giving to whoever has a desire, whoever is a little interested. Even sometimes the devotees are getting delivered simply by the mercy of another devotee. Even they were not very interested. Even they were not very qualified at all. or They simply by the mercy they are given. So this is very rare. Actually, if you think about the opportunity to get Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy that we were born four or five hundred years after five hundred, four hundred ninety six years, uh, well, four hundred and some years after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu we were born. And uh, if we think that what this chance is that Lord Brahma's one day is a thousand ages. Uh, uh, and a thousand ages each age is 4,300,000 years. So thousand, that means what? 4,300,000,000 years. If I'm not wrong in my mathematics. And so, take 100 year segment, or whatever percentage of that we are going to live, that we have just appeared. This chance comes after 4 billion years. You get the association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu except by some rare opportunity if someone stumbles across Vrindava, Gupta Vrindava Navadvip, which is uh, very hidden anyway, very hard to find that tract of land where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is uh, eternally residing. Apart from that, his manifested pastimes, they only appear once in every 4,300,000,000 years. He only comes after Krishna. So we are so fortunate. We shouldn't let this chance go by. Sometimes you hear devotees talk, well, if you miss the Kali Yuga. Of course, you may get delivered by other incarnations, but it, Krishna Prema, pure love for Krishna, to be transferred to Golok Vrindavan is very difficult. Even we see Krishna himself, who would only give his mercy to people completely surrendered to him, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was given even to those who are not completely surrendered. Simply they're chanting Hare Krishna. They're trying to serve. He gives them His mercy. Inconceivable mercy. And thus they become completely surrendered. They become completely elevated to the highest platform. So we should take this opportunity and take the advice of the Prabhupada's advisors to cling to the lotus feet of Nitai Gaur. Don't let go. Now that somehow or another you've got this association, even if you just want it in the door, cling on to the lotus feet of Nitai Go and don't let go. Because if you miss this chance, you, see, you won't be able to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu again after once this movement is off the earth for four billion years. <laughs> Until again Krishna comes. And then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is a very special opportunity. So, if the people could understand that, and if the leaders especially would take it up. So first of all, the teachers of the Brahmanas have to take it up. So Srila Prabhupada said that this movement is brought to the West so that there would be Brahmanas. So the devotees who are full-time 
preachers, they had the brahmanas, the teachers to set the example. The next that is necessary are the leaders. The group of Nuga Prabhu is going to arrange that along with our Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj preaching to all the big leaders. Then, with this good example, then the entire world will become not only heaven, but it will become transcendental. It will at least become a heaven. So, the secret is to inject Krishna consciousness into the sinful, diseased world and this divine transcendental vaccination purifies all type of impediments. This is the Mahashuddhi. Energy of Sodhi Maya, Lord Chaitanya. I have brought the medicine for this illusion, for this Maya. Nashivare Lagi. To destroy this illusion, this this uh, Maya, this disease. Uh, Harinama Maha Mantra, allow to me, Magi. Take the Harinam. Beg for it. Ask for it. Harinam should be asked for. You should want it. Even you're unqualified, if you just want the Harinam, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will give you. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adrayat Gadadharo Sri Vasari Gopakta Vindra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Thank you very much. Right. There is one question. Yeah. Oh, Hindi? What do you say? Do you say Hindi? No, I don't say Hindi. You both are coming. You said that the government said that the government is working. The government is working. But the fact is that ये पहले ही सुना हूँ कि ऐसी होती है लेकिन आज तक अभी तक ऐसी होती नहीं तो कोई ऐसा आदमी नहीं था जो इसे कहा तो मैंने ही ये ऐसा सुना ये ऐसा तो क्यों है जब जब ये कहा गया है कलीयुग में जो ईश्वर की प्राप्ति जल्दी हो जाती है कलीयुग में ही नाम के द्वारा खलो खलो था दरिकीत ना नाम के द्वारा � मोती पूछे द्वारपाल जुग में क्या विष्णु बाल हम द्वार रखता सुंदर सी सिमार मार्गे चिरस्थाया बागी क्या विष्णु बाल हम द्वार रखता सुंदर सी सिमार इधर मार्गे सिला गुरु बागी विष्णु बाल हम द्वार रखता सुंदर सी सिमार इस कांड बाद में लगा दे चिरस्थाया बागी